You are now tuning in to the Going North Podcast with your host, best-selling author, professional speaker, and member of the John Maxwell team, Dominic Dom Brightman. And every Monday and Thursday, we're going to hear the voice of a different author sharing their gifts, stories, and expertise to help you charge forward in life. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North podcast, we're bringing some fabulous humans from across the globe. Today is no different. Today is no different. My goodness. Hashtag black excellence today, baby. My goodness. This guy right here, a widely recognized and eminent speaker with a delivery that is a high energy and human potential stimulating. You heard that right, folks. My man's out to stimulate human potential. And if you can stimulate that, there's no telling how high you can go. It's going to be higher than weed, y'all. This guy right here, raising a low-income city and a college dropout with little formal education, but he took the path of entrepreneurship, forcing a course of endless self-education that's amounted to his success that keeps growing exponentially. And this path has not only allowed him to change the circumstance, but allowed him to effectively communicate the desire to be great to others. So let's give it up. For the champ himself, the double A himself is going to charge you up today and forevermore. My man, Andy Adante, how you doing today, man? I'm glad to be on here, man. Yes, indeed. Glad to have you on, man. I checked out a couple of his shows, man, and I'm like, dude, my my man has got one heck of a powerful story. And you're you're not even 25 yet, right? I'm 25. Yeah, I'm 25. Okay, well, man, just turned 25, so my goodness, congratulations, yeah. dude. My Appreciate man's a, man. Yes, indeed. My man's only a quarter in, and it's only the beginning, man. Well, as with all introductions, I'm pretty sure there's something I forgot, man. So am I filling in anything about the audacious Andy that I forgot to mention? Nah, man, we, we good. We good. Woohoo! That's right. Probably good with 5,000 O's, I bet. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, since this is far from your first rodeo and you're a speaker and you like to command an audience with excellence, man, I, I got to just say, man, I got to commend you for the stance that you took in your book with not only with the title, but you actually talk about average being a sickness. <laughs> like, tell us more about that, man. Look, it sounds like average. When I, when I, when I say like no more average, it really sounds like, like hey, you, got, you really got to get rid of this. And I discovered at a young age, that man, there's really opportunities for you to excel, but the way to excel is by getting around a different environment. So the first thing that I did in order to get out of poverty, in order to get out of the wrong mindset is I changed my environment that allowed me to soar at a high rate. So averageness is essentially just being, being living below your means, living below uh, your, 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 your dream and hang around a group kind of soaking in that misery, and then going to a place of preeminent, which is the step above averageness, going to a place of preeminence, that's where you want to be, where you're living the best life possible based on the vision that you have for your life. Amen to that, and that's something that we all need, especially nowadays where folks may have had progress or still had no progress, then COVID hit, and for some people that may have provided a comfortable excuse, but with some people actually are able to turn that around for the better and you yourself you turned around your whole life for the better man because you had one heck of an upbringing man so am i telling us a bit more about that man well i come from an impoverished area on the east coast in the in the united states rhode island smallest state in the country and i was raised in one of the smallest cities in that state and fortunately i got out but while i was there what I really saw was I saw gang violence, I saw drugs, I saw guns, I saw the whole nine yards as far as living in that type of environment. And really, like, if, if I were to go way back high school, uh, someone introduced me to a marijuana and I started selling it, then I was the, I was a hustler, man. I'm, I'm the guy that was cutting people's hairs. I'm the guy that was selling phones. I was the guy that was uh, selling laptops. I'm the guy that was selling computer screens. I'm the guy that's selling hoverboards. Whatever you need, call Andy. I'll get it for you. 
And then at 19, someone who believed in me suggested that I open up a small business. So I opened up my, my first business after overcoming a tremendous amount of fear, opened up my first business. And uh, that's when my entrepreneurship journey, journey where I'd say really took off uh, in that business. Yes, sir. Indeed. Yes, sir. Indeed. And it's good that you're able to turn that us onto something positive and really create something for yourself out there and actually keep it going because some people they get to a certain level and they rest on their laurels and they just try to take it too easy and never keep going man so what really kept you going man because i know some of your backstory is a lot of it was for both your little brothers going to college and your mom and your pops it was definitely that the that i re i realized that people there are a group of people who are depending on me now i'm not talking about the people who are depending on me because of my finances or the people who depend on me financially or or who work for me. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about from a spiritual point of me fulfilling my dreams, me fulfilling my goals, that there's a group of people who are gonna benefit from it. And the group of people who benefit from my, from my content, the people, group of people who benefit from my success, they depend on me. So I'll give you an example of what that means. Like when I was 19, for example, I'm living this in a poverty hood and I had someone who walked into the, to one of the cell phone stores. He was a black guy, he had earrings in and he was bald. And I don't know who this guy is, who, who this guy is, and he walks past me. And it's my store. I'm working at the store, but this guy is like walking in with his head head down on his phone, walking in, and he's typing on his phone. Literally walks past me. I'm at the desk, mind you. I literally started in this company like maybe uh, a month ago, a month and a half um, at that time. And so I'm in this new company. I'm new to the company. This guy walks by me confidently. So I don't know if I'm getting robbed. I don't know what's going on. I don't, <laughs> you know, I'm like, this dude has a suit on. No, his earrings bald, walking into the store like, what's up? And he walks past me and I'm like, that's the slickest way to rob somebody, man. Just, just <laughs> like, we'll go there nicely and just kind of just kind of walk, walk, walk in and just like, hey, what's up, man? Just walk in. So I didn't know what was going on. I kind of go to the back and then when I go to the back, I saw that the, the uh, office manager was there and I said, hey, Jen, like, who is this guy? And then she said, oh, he owns a company. I said, he, a black guy owns this company? And so I was working at Metro PCS at the time. So I was working at one of their franchises and the guy I worked for, his name is James. I was, he was a franchisee of uh, T-Mobile Metro PCS. And that is when I saw that his success gave me an opportunity. When he became successful, and just be owning these companies, it showed me that, hey, I don't have to sell drugs. I don't have to be the one that, that needs to go put, put myself in a position where I'm gonna go to jail or things of that nature. I can literally win in this situation that we're in called life and not be part of the status quo. So when I say pe people are depending on you, like I didn't know that I was depending on him just to just visually see that it was actually possible to win and be black at the same time. Amen to that, dude. And, and I agree with you full, fully on that, man, because that's something that we need to be put out there more often because I'm pretty sure you you know with us both being black and the fact that we're always preached about, hey, they show us the rappers, the entertainers, the athletes. Like, that's the only way for a black person, especially a black man, to be successful when that's not true. They, you can actually – be a businessman. You can be a franchise owner. You can do whatever you want or you need to do to create success for yourself without having to be an athlete or an entertainer. Yeah. You know, one of my friends, Justin, he has a t-shirt that says, um, it says like rapper and then there's like a line through it. And then it says athlete and there's like a line through it. And then um, underneath it says entrepreneur. And it shows that, Hey, that's what I am. I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm not a rapper, I'm not an athlete, I'm not a gang member, I'm an entrepreneur. So yeah, man, as a black person, I think that's one of the, one of the biggest challenges is, especially um, I see that there's a lot of black men who are growing up fatherless. So my father was physically there, but he wasn't like emotionally there, he wasn't emotionally present. Um, he was uh, physically there, like, as in like we had the same address, but my father didn't raise me, you know, he was, he was there. So being fatherless essentially i'm looking for a male figure in my life and i think that happens to a lot of black men where they're looking for male figures and man what ends up happening is that they look for the person that's successful in the area 
and sometimes it could be the young the, the drug dealer and what a drug dealer would do is that they're gonna go give an opportunity to that person and say hey man you know what do this for me and this will be the result if you do it you'll win and that kind of sets in that person's mind like hey this is the person i gotta look up to so people look end up falling to bad opportunities uh, for their life where that's why i really focus on hey how high can i go up so that way just my presence can show to other black men and black women and black kids and children that, hey, I don't gotta go that route. This is an opportunity for me to go the same direction that Andy went, which is the direction that Andy went was uh, a positive, enlightened direction, not only for the society, but for their life. Amen to that, dude, amen to that. And funny enough, I was listening to one of your past interviews, you mentioned how you really didn't have emotions. You didn't really feel emotions until I believe it was like, what, 2018 maybe? Yeah, you finally got within yourself like that, man. Yeah, I didn't have I didn't have emotion. I was emotionally numb for um, a good portion of my life. When I when I walked around the block, I I I kind of just looked mad all the time. And, and my mom would say to me, "You look mad." I'm like, "It's my face." So <laughs> you know, because because where I come from, you you need to survive. You're in a place of survival. You're not in a place of thriving. You're in a place of survival. So one of the, the ways to survive is to have a face that never shows your emotions. And then eventually what ends up happening is that that will become your new uh, way of being is that you're just numb. So if you go so long without expressing happiness or gratitude, you will end up just, that's naturally your state. So that was naturally my state for some time. And then uh, someone who was a friend of mine, she introduced me to a program and the program got me out of my got out of my comfort zone and really dug in deep into me emotionally. And that is what allowed me to get out of myself and really focus on who Andy our date really is and what I can give to the world and recognize that there is joy in that. Hey man to that dude, and congrats on the discovery. Do you remember what the program was? Yeah, it was it's a personal development training here in Los, uh, in Los Angeles. Ah, uh, nice. All righty. L.A., baby. The City of Angels, as they call it. Mm-hmm. Or the City of Tyrone or something. Never mind. No, nobody calls it that. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. But yes, indeed, man. And it's good that we have you on the show because you're an inspirational figure, especially at such a young age, how you're able to develop this iron level of confidence, man. Because I actually heard your past story about how in during your teenage years, you actually had the darn guy no situation and you're able to turn that around. <laughs> with the whole man boobs thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, look, 13 years old, 14, 13, 14, around that time, I'm, I'm becoming a man where, hey, man, like, I'm, I'm seeing my body in comparison to some of the, my counterparts, like people in my area, and I'm like, man, my body is different. I have man breasts, and I, I'm, I'm trying to just kind of have this confidence, but it's not working out the way that I thought it would. So I go online and I'm looking for people, other people, and I'm looking for, look, what I was looking for was someone to show me the way. I'm looking for someone to just give me direction. I'm a young guy, I'm 13, I got full of energy, I'm full of, I'm driven. What is the direction for my life? Like, where am I going? So I'm looking online and I'm looking for other men, black men who are older than me at the time. So I'm 13, 14, I'm looking for guys who are older than me with with, with man breasts, like, can I find somebody to give me to give me that sense of direction that hey, it is possible to be successful and not to be a statistic just because I have man breasts. So I lo- I found the only person I found at the time was Rick Ross, which is a rapper, and that wasn't necessarily the the the, the best example for me. So I thought you know I may be doomed in my life, and then I remember there was a moment where I was really suicidal about it, and you know contemplating on on essentially not living because of the way that I felt. And then the, the, the suicidal thoughts went away. I found God, most importantly, and what I believe God told me at that time was, hey, I'm gonna make you that successful person so you can be that um, person that you're looking for for other people. And I was like, oh, okay, God, I'll just follow the journey then, <laughs> you know? Amen to that dude and created so much in the decade and counting after that, man. And 
you still are you still faith based entrepreneur basically even though that's not your main thing it's a publicized though you still consider yourself a faith based person oh yeah most definitely i truly believe that the reason i'm even a bit uh uh i have the opportunity that i have you know one of the the blessings that I ask for or thank God for is definitely just opportunity. I say thank you for opportunity. It's not necessarily, you know, asking for the uh, outcome, but more so for the opportunity to receive the outcome. So whatever the outcome is, uh, I'm not typically asking for the outcome. I'm more so focused on the, the opportunity um, and to showcase myself. You know, I don't know how God looks at me or how God looks at uh, his children specifically, and I, maybe the, the the word will will enlighten that, and everyone has their own uh, experience. But I know for me, like in my life, I I believe that God is going to give me opportunities, and it's for my job to fulfill those opportunities instead of hey, I'm just going to receive the uh, blessing. The blessing, the opportunity is the blessing. The blessing is the opportunity. It's not the outcome. So it's not like. The uh, God, give me a car. It's not, it's not that. It's that, okay, you want a car? Well, hey, a job just fell on your lap. Oh, no, I don't want to fucking work here. This fucking place sucks. <laughs> what, what the What the heck? No, go, go get the job, get the money, go buy yourself a car. I'm, I give you the opportunity, you know? So as that, the, the, to some, it doesn't make sense. And I think, I think some, some, some may miss out on the blessing, um, miss out on their opportunity. And they really, they really are stuck in life because they're not realizing that when they say, hey, I want a car or I want the house or I want the whatever, and God says, all right, man, here's a job. And the person's like, that's not what I asked for. I asked for a car. But the job will lead to the car. So that's someone who says, hey, God, give me a cake. And, and, the, and the God says, God, somehow one guy gives the person flour the other person is driving and then and then they see a yard sale and then they see a bowl and then and then in the bowl they can put the flour in and then as they're driving somebody is selling eggs and then you can ask somebody for the eggs and boom put the egg in and then you can go to the grocery store god gave you work the money to be able to buy the water and then you put the water and you mix it and you put it into the oven that you have at home that God blessed you with at one point, and you put the you put it into the oven, it comes out a cake. I think some people are missing it, are getting it twisted. God's gonna give you the opportunity. That's the blessing. It's not the other way around. So true, man. So true, and I agree with you wholeheartedly with that because that's kind of because <laughs> because God does have a sense of humor because it's like, hey, you you have you want this car, but. He's not going to give you the exact car. He'll give you the opportunity to get the car. And that's the blessing within itself. And heck, even using that one opportunity to multiply your outcomes too. It's like you may get one car to start off with, with the job, maybe get a better job, better car, or even expand your wealth in other ways too. So definitely fully agree with you there, my man. Definitely agree with you there, man. So any inspiration for the fellow black millennial wants to create success for themselves, especially if they may be a, faith-based person like yourself? Look, man, you got to think big. I think the, one of the biggest opportunities that's being underutilized is the magic of thinking big and getting out of your own little bubble, okay? So number one is think big. Number two is get out of your own little bubble. When I say think big and what I'm talking about in thinking big, what I'm saying is that you have a goal here and you look at this goal like this big, I want you to start thinking a little bit bigger than that and get yourself to be really uncomfortable. Because like when you see this goal, you're like, oh man, you know what? I got it, I'm, I'm cool with this. However, if you start thinking over here, this goal that you're trying to hit becomes, uh, I wanna say meaningless, but this goal ends up being not the target. So the target is a little bit much higher. So you're so focused on hitting the higher target that you will in inevitably hit the bottom goal. So I'll give you an example when it comes to money. The reason I'll say money is because it's an easy, measurable uh, uh, commodity. So if you're saying, hey, my goal is to make a million dollars in a year, then, um, then what you really got to start thinking is, hey, how can I make five million and commit to the five million and really live like you're trying to hit the five million. And then you'll hit the million, you might hit the 1.3 million and you're like, fuck, man, I missed the, offer. I missed the, 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 five, the five million. However, the goal was actually one million. <laughs> so you did hit the target. So that's number one. Think big. 
Number two is going to be the magic of thinking. Uh, number two is going to be – what I said number two was? Shit. Yeah, man. So magic of thinking big and the second one, I believe, was not, – nah, not action. <laughs> God dang it. Even I forgot because I was so stuck in the example. <laughs> No, that, that 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 was a good that was that was a good example. But you know, you really gotta show up for these opportunities. You really gotta show up for these opportunities. So it starts off with thinking big, but once you once you start thinking big, opportunities are gonna present itself in front of you. And it's up to you to take those opportunities. You know, one of the quotes that I say is that the opportunity is in the show up. The reason why that the opportunity is in the show up is because that's who's committed to the fucking opportunity right there. Look, so many, so many chances are, are given amongst this world. So many chances are given amongst this world for people to grow past their current circumstance. And then the opportunity presents itself. It may not be in the form that the person thought. You know, I'll give you an example. Um, there are people that I talk to. So throughout the day, I, I do sales, sales meetings, and then I also uh, sales meetings with clients. And then I also have my team members who work for me who do sales meetings with clients. And... They, they, go, they talk to uh, different entrepreneurs and, and entrepreneurs that are in the startup phase and to give them a chance to really excel in their business. Now, the way that a 20-year-old makes a million dollars is not by falling, is kind of thinking off the top of his head. He gathers data from someone else who's ahead of him, who's already done it, and takes that information and applies it. So when I was 20 years old, I had that mentor that I was telling you that you can't grab the earrings and stuff like that. And I walked into the store thinking, thinking of robbing him. A year later after that experience, I then became business partners with him. And then he taught me the game. So I, 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 you know, I gave a little bread to him, a little money to him. And then he gave me the knowledge. To this day, I'm still using this knowledge. So, so I'm not even in that business no more. I've generated hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars in that business. I'm not even in that business anymore. So I took the knowledge, applied it, applied it, and received the blessings, received the winnings. So I think what happens is that some entrepreneurs are missing out on opportunities tremendously right now. Because uh, when you write poor, the acronym for poor, P-O-O-R, is pass over opportunities repeatedly. So there are some oh, people wow. right now, <laughs> there are some people right now who are in a position where they have an opportunity and they say, you know what, I got to think about it. I think I have to think about it is like one of the biggest dream killers, right? I have to think about it. I think that's one of the biggest dream killers. So people are like, hey, I got to think about it. Okay, go think about it. Then someone else takes that opportunity. I'll give you an example. I mean, even in, even in, in uh, my, my business, I'll give you a small example. I'm talking about, let me give you a real tiny, real life example that I can relate to right now in my business. We changed the prices on my product, on some of my products. So there was a product that was $99. We gave the opportunity to someone and we said, hey, take advantage of this offer. Okay. Then we broke the offer price up to 197. Okay. And at 197, we gave, we started selling the product. The person who had to think about it at 99 came back and said, hey, I'm ready. Now it's 197. So you take losses by thinking about it. You take losses by thinking about it. So when you receive an opportunity, you got to take advantage of the opportunity in the lifetime, that window, in the lifetime of that opportunity. That's what I got to say to black people. Not only just black people, just anybody. You got to take advantage of an opportunity. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on the blessing that was originally designed for you. Woo, my man Reverend Andy is on fire, baby. My man needs a robe now, baby, because he's preaching it. My man's preaching it, baby. And he's preaching it so much that it came back to me. Part two was get out of your bubble. Get out of your bubble. Definitely. Definitely. And I'm talking about your environment. When I say get out of your bubble, I say you're, I'm talking about your environment. So right now, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm not, so, not so empty. I mean, I got my big desk here and, uh, you know, lights and in this room. This is, I got my whiteboards up. This is my office, my home office that I just set up in the last couple of days. I just moved to Las Vegas literally a um, hundred something hours ago. So I just got to, I just got to Vegas and, um, you know, we're now setting up, we're about to paint, you know, getting couches delivered and TVs delivered and, and set up and food delivered, all that stuff, you know, what you do when you get a new place. So I had to get out of my environment that kept me comfortable. So I'm originally on the East Coast. And I, I, I thrived on the East Coast. Then I moved to the West Coast and I'm in California. 
And once I recognized that I'm in a threshold in California, I moved quickly. And it only took me a few minutes to really decide and commit to moving. And within days, we came to check out the apartment and move in and the whole thing. So it's, it's about getting out of your bubble, which is your environment, fast. I'm talking about once the idea comes, like take action towards that objective, ASAP. Don't wait, don't think about it, don't ponder, move quick. <laughs> yeah, man, definitely got to change that zip code, man. Congrats on the move, man, all the way out to Nevada, man. <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, it's like, it's like your, 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 your dream, your vision, I want you to think about your dream and vision like a fire. You know, you don't, when, you, when you see the, when you're walking home, and your home is on fire, you're not going to be like, hmm, <laughs> let me think about this, man. Let, let, me, let me think about this. Let me, uh, let me just think about this. Like, no, you take action quick. Go get water. Go, go get water. Go knock on doors. Boom, boom, boom. Make phone calls. 911, hello, hello. Hello, hey, we, we got to take care of this. Hey, put something on top of it. Handle it. You know, let me think about it. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people right now, especially after COVID that a COVID-19 or during COVID-19 that people's incomes took a, took a dip or whatever. And they're like, let me think about it. Let me, let me think about it. All right, man. You think you keep thinking about it. I'm telling you the blessings will pass over. The blessings will pass over. I believe wholeheartedly that if God, my biggest fear was so on my sales team, we, we do what we call a connection question and a connection question it's simply just asking a question because we're my company is ran virtual. I got team members in the Philippines, team members in Europe, team members in Latin America. I got team members in America, and so my team is all over the globe. So because of that, um, the way that I connect the team and, and make sure that we have that uh, that culture that is truly connected amongst the organization is a uh, through a connection question, which is has nothing to do with work. We just ask a question. So yesterday's question I think was like, "What's your biggest fear?" And every single person in, in um, their, their specific department in my organization answered that question. And when, I, when I'm in the meetings, I actually participate and I answer the question. So the question yesterday was, what's your biggest fear? And I answered that. My biggest fear is going to God. And God said, fuck, man. I gave you, I gave you this big old thing to do, and you only did 5%. Oh, shit. I gave you everything that you needed, and you only did 5%. Damn. That's my biggest fear, man. My biggest fear is not spiders. It's not that. It's like going to God and God saying, you only, you only, you only, hand, you only did 5%. I gave you this, the systems. I gave you everything you needed. And I truly believe that God gives you everything you need. Every single thing you need. I believe that God will give you every single thing you need. And you just got to look at it for what it is. So it's like those people, those people who are like, who, who might get a box from, the, from Amazon. I don't have any boxes here. Oh, I do actually. So those people who might get a box from Amazon and they may say, okay, I got the box from Amazon and they're trying to rip it. Oh, I can't rip it. I can't rip it. I can't rip it. And they're hurting themselves. They're literally like hurting their nails. I can't rip it. I can't rip the box. Little did they know that there was a fucking knife around. They just weren't looking to open up the box. So what I'm sharing with you is that I believe that God gives you everything you need. It's, a, it's just about taking action with those things. Amen, folks. Amen, folks. My man's going in, babe. My man's going in. So put out that fire known as brokenness. <laughs> yeah, that's a real fire, man. That's a, that's a real fire. Yes, indeed, man. Heck, even put out the fire of limited thinking, too, right? <laughs> what? The limited, the fire of limited thinking and averageness, right? <laughs> Dude, that, that sounds like serious, man. That's actually a cool thing to say, to put out the fire of limited thinking. Um, but yeah, put out the fire of limited thinking. You know, start thinking big and, and start questioning, hey, how can I get to that position? And what is it going to take for me to get to that position? That's the question that you should be asking yourself is what can I do to get to that position? And, and who can help me get there? That's what you got to start asking yourself. Amen to that, because that way you'll actually seek to grow as far as you can go, as opposed to making the goal, the basically the finish line, because that shouldn't be a finish line. No, nah, no, nah, you know, they say success is a success is uh is is a journey, not a destination. I think success is a destination. There's just multiple destinations and multiple points of success. So, you know, you you really gotta start hitting up targets, start focusing on 
on getting to targets, and most importantly, recognize your progression. I think a lot of entrepreneurs miss on that opportunity where they don't um, recognize their, their own progression of what they accomplished in the last 30 days, 90 days, year, two years. They don't recognize it. Start looking at those little things that you did that to improve and recognize that you did improve and, and use that information as a way to build your confidence. Because the higher you go, you just, you, what you're going to need is more confidence, more courage. So it was easy for me to move so quickly out of my home. I was living in downtown Los Angeles, and it was in the, we were in the middle of the riots. We were literally right, I was literally right in the middle of the riots in downtown LA. So the Staples Center was right here, uh, where the Lakers and the, the, the Lakers play the biggest arena in downtown LA. And down the street is my house. And you got march and riots and people breaking into stuff and and so on and so forth. We loaded up me and my me and my girlfriend and, and my maid and my and my homeboy. We loaded up the the U-Haul truck. Bang, got out of town. Haven't been there since. I, I was able to act quick. I was able to act quick. So you want to do the same thing in your life and, and, and recognize that. Hey, act quick. Take don't think about it. You already thought about it because thought takes this long. Like, I want you to think about a pink dolphin. Pink dolphin. <laughs> yeah, man. Long. Thought takes that long. So for you to think about it, that's not what it is. You got to question your commitment. That's what, you're, that's what you're questioning right now. When people say I got to think about it, it's not that they actually got to think about it. What they're thinking about is, am I actually committed? Am I actually committed? So we host uh, an event called the Brand Marketing Summit. The so for the people that are interested in marketing their brand, all you need to do is go to brandmarketingsummit.net to learn more about this two-day event. But, you know, I just had a call with someone and someone said, I have to think about it, right? So I have a call with two guys. There's two guys, I'll tell you. This is a real life situation. 60 days ago, 65 days ago, I had a call with two guys on one day. Call number one is a 24-year-old. Call number two is a 26-year-old. The 24, to both black men, the 24 year old says, man, this is expensive, but I'm going and I'm gonna invest. So he invests and he joins the brand marketing summit. Fast forward 65 days. That person now is hosting his own seminars, brand new motivational speaker. So he had never spoken on stage before, um, wants to, has the idea of speaking. So he went through the brand marketing summit. So he went to brandmarketingsummit.net and he signed up. And then at, on the uh, uh, part of the training, he learned exactly what it takes to become a profitable business owner using the internet. So he uses a system that he learned. Now he's hosting his large seminars. I'm talking about some big seminars. 65 days ago, he wasn't doing it. That's the, call number two on that same day. That person says, I got to think about it. I got to think about it. So now the person that had to think about it is still in ground zero while the person who took action is now hosting live events. So the person from call two is now the, the person from call one, the person that took action gave an opportunity to the person from call two. I don't know how they know each other, but they gave, he gave an opportunity to, to the person from call two. That's the difference of being the lender and being the borrower. You see that? Catch me on that. Mm, That's like the that. difference of being the person being able to give the opportunity and the other person having a handout. So what I'm sharing with you is that when the opportunity presents itself, take advantage of it and don't miss out. There you go, folks. Don't miss out on those opportunities, baby. And speaking of not missing out, I know you're working on a book a second book i believe was called the progressive economy is that still in the works is there anything else that's on the big horizon for because i know you're always moving you got a big vision ahead of you that you're trying to manifest here man i i'm excited to launch this book uh i'm excited to launch it. i'm not 100 percent sure if it's to call the progressive economy but you definitely did your research and i'm really excited to to launch this new book that i am that i am writing and this is going to be big because i wouldn't want to say i predicted the, the effects of COVID-19. However, what I did recognize a long time ago that the economy was changing and I wasn't part of the 2008 economy. I wasn't contributing to the, to the economy in 2008. 
I was uh, in eighth grade at the time. So I was consuming, I wasn't contributing. And, but now that I'm a contributor, a massive con contributor at that in, the, in this current economy, the economy flipped the switch a couple of months ago with COVID-19. And I found that to be a blessing and a, and in disguise for some. And I think for some others as well, they're, it, it, it hurt them. But this is how we are progressing as an economy. So the progressive economy is showing how we are progressing as an economy because so many companies and entities were now forced to go remote and they were like, wow, this actually works to work at home. <laughs> but I work, I work from home. I work at my home. My executive assistant works from her home. My sales manager works from their home. All my appointment setters and sales managers work from their home. My marketing team works from home. My web developer works from home. My graphic design, everyone works from home. And I'm talking to these large companies and large CEOs of these large organizations. And they're telling me like, hey man, I got this big ass office that I'm paying rent and lease on and nobody there working. So a real small entrepreneur is right now going to take advantage of where we're going at in the new economy. Work from, build a company that you can actually work from home. It's okay. And I think where, where some people are getting their data from, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the, the dot-com era where the people who were on, online, like I want you to think about the richest man on the, in the world right now, Jeff Bezos, right? So Jeff Bezos in the late 90s starts up Amazon.com. Now he's the richest man at home. But that was the beginning of the dot-com era. Now, dot com to have a website to have an online business is more common, but now people are thinking like working at home is a little kind of weird, like as if you're not official or something. And what I'm telling you is that is the new economy to work from home and build a multiple seven figure business and in, in the millions from home is realistically the new economy. Some people are going to get it twisted and say, hey, you need an office and spend $35,000 a month on an office when you actually don't even need the fucking office because everything is paperless and everything is based on the internet now. Oh, uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So true, man. It's like, <laughs> like, forget the office, man. Like, try to invest in strong Wi-Fi. That's probably the biggest thing you need to invest in and get that. <laughs> That's really what it is. <laughs> exactly. Right now, you want to invest in strong Wi-Fi and build a, a digital team. So, like, at the Brand Marketing Summit, for example, I teach how to use – utilize the support of virtual assistants to run your business. And I think a lot of people are undercapitalizing on this opportunity where you can literally build a global empire from your kitchen, from your table, you know, from, from your home. You can literally build a global empire, but people are missing out on the opportunity. So some people are right now are either gonna take advantage of the opportunity or they're gonna hear about the successful people who took advantage and then they missed it. So you, you wanna be ahead of the curve, not, not behind it. And the curve, when you hear that means, when you hear that, we're talking about when we look at data on a graph. So if we looked at this point right here and we saw that it was very low and then we saw that it rose up, so that could be revenue, that could, that could be customers, that could be businesses, that could be success. When we're here at the low point and we're kind of steady right here uh, throughout time and then you see this curve go up, you want to be ahead of the curve where you took action over here while everyone's over here. So you want to be ahead of the curve, taking action. So I'm ahead of the curve by running a, running a, a global empire from my home. Now, I actually teach this now at the Brand Marketing Summit, how to be able to do that, how to use the, what software to use, when to use it, how to use it, and so on and so forth. So, but really, this day and age, the economy is forever different. The economy is forever different. The first thing I told my, my lady, when the uh, COVID-19 happened, I said, hey, 2019 is over. We'll never be back again. What happened last year is last year. We'll never be back again. We literally got to re recreate ourselves, recreate the business, recreate everything. And we did just that. And now it was much easier. I can tell you, um, Dom, that it was much easier for me to recreate my business because my business was already set up for the new economy. So some entities are so behind the curve that they're trying to catch up and it's going to be a little bit too late for them. Heck yeah, man. Especially like if it's like a retail store and heck even a lot of small businesses that relied on just storefront too, it, and never even had a website and, <laughs> and probably didn't even have social media pages at all either promoting anything that they did. 
Yeah, that would be very unfortunate, man, for the people who are uh, who have who you know. I know what it's like to run a retail business, man, and and I was I was thinking about opening because I built money in this business. I said, hey, what do I should I open up? Because I, I originally closed a cell phone store. Uh, at 21, I was so uneducated about business. I didn't know how you can sell it. I didn't know I could franchise it. I didn't know about all these things um, of growth, business growth. I literally thought that the McDonald's CEO was the person who started it and that they cared about their business as much as I cared about mine, like it was a small business. So I didn't sell it. I closed the business down. And then I thought about opening up the business recently. I think in the last two years, I think I thought about opening up the cell phone store again. And, you know, I started really digging deep into recognizing that there is a new economy coming to come and the cell phone, the, the, the malls and the stores are going to be shut down uh, very soon. So I decided not to. But if you are in a business right now where you have in a retail store or you have a business that is based on brick and mortar, you really want to focus on how you can create that to be click and order, not brick and mortar. You want to focus on how that business can now be click and order because I literally can, I literally like from my phone, you know, we just, we just purchased a couch literally and maybe 30 hours ago. Um, and then it got delivered. I can literally from my phone order the couch, boop, 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 and then have it delivered to my door. And somebody and a group of guys bring the couch in. You know, you don't gotta go the old route, you know. So a lot of the the equipment that I have here was was ordered online. Um, as I started growing my business, I just ordered stuff online. So you want to start thinking in that fashion. Hey, how can I turn my business into a click and order? If you are currently now in bricking brick and mortar man oh man make your business click in order not brick and mortar my goodness my man poetry in motion baby that's what i'm talking about poetry in motion my man's summoning some of his old rap career days baby <laughs> y'all oh, ain't yeah. reappeared for a moment <laughs> i used to i used to be a rapper back in the day man i used to they call you they call me young a music <laughs> Yes, sir, indeed. Yes, sir, indeed. Well, congratulations, man, on all the success that you've created and more of that's to come, man. So since you've been on these all these podcast interviews, is there a specific question that you wish you'd be asked more often? Um, I mean, I think I talk about more and more, more of my story than anything else, but I, I really want to talk about the like what's the solution to, to to really scaling the business and growing the business and more solution focused because i think a lot of entrepreneurs right now are suffering from the opportunity to scale and i think a lot of entrepreneurs are really um self-employed where they have their they essentially own their own job so i think this this industry of entrepreneurship is actually misunderstood you know, I became an entrepreneur before Instagram, before all this social media hype about business and stuff like that. I was already in business. I was, I was the man behind. And as a serial entrepreneur, one of the things you really want to focus on is what's popping, like what's the trend and take advantage of it. Because the, the pager was cool, like having a pager on your hip was cool in the 1990s, doesn't mean that today you should open up a pager store. <laughs> you should you should really start looking as to what is the next wave of opportunity in the next 50 years while you're alive on this planet you should start really looking at that opportunity and saying hey i'm going to capitalize on that so what's really truly being undercapitalized right now is the building of the personal brand that not recognizing that you can literally grow whatever business if you have a personal brand so if you have a specific headphone um that you want that you want to sell hey you can use your personal brand to be able to drive traffic to sell your product uh, if you have a cell phone you can use a personal brand so i think i would have become a rich rich multi 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 millionaire uh in the last four years i mean uh, in, in um in four years from the time when i owned the cell phone stores if i used a personal brand because i was focused completely on marketing the business and I failed to use a personal brand. So nobody actually knew the business owner of the, the location. They just knew the business. So that's like, for example, right now, when you go into a AT&T store, 
many times it's not AT&T that owns the business. It's a company that could be um, XX Company Wireless Incorporated, and they did a deal with AT&T to have the AT&T logo on the front. And then when you come into the store, part of the contract says that the store has to look a certain way with a certain color and a certain light. So that way it's cohesive throughout the brand. So AT&T can have this like idea or, or this persona as if that all the stores look the same. And so this company, if that, that company can now grow because of a personal brand versus just a company by itself. Hey man, you're so tr right about that. And that's a thing that a lot of people don't know about and heck even, I think it was like last year went to a seminar and this lady really like manifested the truth that perception is reality because heck even it goes with that example. It's like AT&T, you may see AT&T, the sign and the store may be designed that way, but it could be owned really by another company that's not really AT&T. And a lot of folks don't know that. And it's all because of branding and heck even franchising too, where it's like you have to do things in a certain way that people desire for you to, carry their name and if you can help take their name and create your own success out of it it's, it's like one heck of a deal because it's win-win they have a store they get more sales more eyes in their brand and you the owner of that franchise that business of your own you can take that money like you did and then create something totally different afterwards yeah that's really how i, I position myself in the end and that's one of the one of the most strategic ways that i see a lot of companies and a lot of entrepreneurs win in the long term is that they hop on an opportunity for maybe four or five, 10 years, and then take the proceeds from that organization into, and, and then invest it into whatever they want. So literally that, that would be the path. So in, in the cell phone business, that's exactly how it is, my man, where the, the cell phone business is a front. Everybody's happy because the entrepreneur like myself can follow a system. So like they, they can literally, I can literally go and open up a T-Mobile store today and follow the T-Mobile system. And they have a system on acquisition, on how to acquire customers, how to retain, how to get the highest um, monthly reoccurring charge, how to get more customers in the door, what phones that sell, what phones don't sell, they have the system. So it would be idiotic for me to go and try to duplicate the system from a customer standpoint. It's stupid. I would, I would be stronger to go to T-Mobile and say, hey, let me partner up with you. Now the benefit for a company like that is that T-Mobile says, hey, you become a different distribution source for their products and their services that they'll take a little bit of the pie, which just adds to their bigger pie. So you're a little bit, you add a little bit to their bigger pie. And then out of that pie that, that is a little bit, you take the bigger chunk of it and now you're able to make money off of their system. So like, for example, like with the brand marketing system, I teach the brand marketing system at the brand marketing summit. So that's where I was telling your audience to go to brandmarketingsummit.net to look at, to look at an opportunity to use a system to grow their personal brand. Now, the reason you want a system is because it's going to save you time, energy, and money. That's what a system is. S Y S Y S Y S T E M. A system is to save yourself time, energy, and money. So if you want to grow in a, as an entrepreneur, you got to follow a system. There's, the difference between a self, someone who's self-employed and a business owner, the difference between that is someone who's self-employed owns their own job so that they are still working. They are still working like a slave sometimes, and they're getting underpaid. They're, and... and and a business owner is someone who owns a business and the business happens to be a system. So a business owner is a system owner. So if I go open up a, a, a McDonald's, I own a system or, or I, own, I own a portion of a system, which is the McDonald's speedy system. And that, that's what it's called. Like, so when you look at a, how a burger goes from uh, being frozen to going on the grill, using a certain technology to heat the food on both sides and then move the food to a certain, another grill to keep it warm. And then how we move that food to the, to the, to the sandwich maker and how the sandwich maker takes that food and gives it to the, um, the person who's working with the customer directly. And that happens within two minutes. That's called McDonald's speedy system. 
So the way that McDonald's is growing is because of their speedy system. So what you want to do as an entrepreneur right now is you want to find a system that's effective and proven and get behind it and, and capitalize off it. It's the people who try to create a brand new system out of nothing that ends up having to take a long time to learn how to really win. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. So I know you got to run, so it's going to make the last question real quick so you can be on time for your next meeting, man. And that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 18 again in 2020 with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Oh, shit. If I was 18 again in 2020 and I had to give myself some information to win, I would definitely give myself some business knowledge. And if I had every single point of data that I would do, I would literally do what I'm doing right now. I would start this, this uh, a business giving people opportunity. Now, if I didn't have the success that I had, that I have, then what I would do is I would get behind someone who's already successful and learn from them. Because the fastest way to grow is through uh, getting data. You want to get that information and duplicate that in your life. The, there's no reason to, to recreate the wheel. There's no reason to, to say, hey, I need to go from point A to point B. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, go, go find a horse and, and, and build a carriage with the wheel that is made out of a square to take me from point A to point B just for me to find out that it will be better for that square to be a circle. There's no reason for me to do that. Why? Because there's already cars available for me to purchase right away that is effective and works. So instead of me trying to get a horse and, 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 and use that technology, I can get use newer technology. So I would tell myself, Andy, find someone who's super successful and by any means, whatever it takes, go work for that person, get money to pay that person, do whatever it takes, get around that person so that way you can win and learn from them, learn their systems and implement them in your life. Woohoo! Well, there you have it, folks. My man, Ed, has dropped a lot of gold, a lot of massive value. Folks, follow this man, the double A himself, man. So one quick time for the folks listening to put your stuff in the show notes, man. So anything you want to leave us before we uh, close out, man? Hey, the opportunity is in the show up. So, hey, by the time you, 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 watch, you, you, you finish uh, consuming this content, go to brandmarketingsummit.net. That's where you want to go right now. Build your personal brand. Go to brandmarketingsummit.net. Hey there, you superstar. Thanks a bunch for making it this far in the podcast. Hope you really enjoyed it. Heck, if you made it this far, that means you really enjoyed it. Be sure to shoot the guest an email or head over to the social media pages and leave them a nice response that you heard them on the Going North podcast so that way they can continue to be inspired to do great things. And be sure to share this podcast with others that you think would enjoy it as well. Because you want to inspire as many people as possible to live their dreams, embrace them, and to do something positive.